When children play outdoors, there's a chance they'll touch contaminated soil and then touch their mouths right after. Or they might accidentally swallow contaminated water while swimming. This leaves them at risk of parasitic worms. These parasites often affect a child's growth as well as their development. This is why deworming for both children and adults is vital. On the program today, we'll talk more about the benefits of deworming, the most common parasitic infections, and the treatments available. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez, and welcome to MedTalk Health Talk right here on CNN Philippines. Worms are parasites that take up residence inside a person. If left untreated, it can develop into an infectious disease. Our guests are here today to tell us what to do if this happens and how to prevent it altogether. With us is Dr. Rosalie Fuentes de la Rosa. She's a pediatrician at Dr. Sally's Pediatric Clinic. Also with us is Dr. Cesar Matthew Madria. He is a family and community medicine specialist from the Cagayan Valley Medical Center. You might be surprised to know that parasitic intestinal worms are very, very common. In fact, in 2018, one in every two Filipino school children were infected with worms. Some parents have started to believe that it's normal or even beneficial, but parasitic worms are detrimental to a child's health. I'll start first with uh, Dr. Sally. Tell us more about current tradition of uh, intestinal parasitic worms, especially here in the Philippines? There are detrimental effects of parasitic infestation in the body. It is a most common infection which affects many people each year worldwide, particularly mga school-aged children. So anyone can get infected, not just children yes. but adults as well. And there are certain factors that make some people more vulnerable to intestinal worms. Dr. Matthew, can you explain how someone can get them? Ano yung mga pinaka-common ways na na-infect tayo ng uh, intestinal worms? First is the fecal oral route. This is when a healthy person drinks water or eats food that is contaminated with the helminth egg. So after taking in, this larva now will hatch from the egg and it will, it will migrate actually to the other parts of the body such as the lungs, the liver, and even into the heart. When this larvae will get nourishment from the body, from the host, they will become adult worms. Now, these adult worms will uh, reproduce and create more eggs, and this will be passed into the stool. So this is the problem now. Uh, when a person indiscriminately defecates into open places, th that is where the cycle starts. Why are infections more prevalent, especially dito sa Pilipinas? Actually, there are different risk factors for parasitic worm infection. Number one is always poor sanitation. When you don't wash your hands or, uh, before and after eating, if you're, even after doing dirty works, no? eating raw, improperly prepared food or drinking contaminated water. Even occupation, because uh, soil transmitted infection needs soil uh, for it to be transmitted. So this is where the farmers are very much vulnerable in this infection. Another is poverty, the, the absence of the clean and safe comfort rooms for the proper disposal of the stools. And lastly is being in the tropics because, you know, uh, some helmets need a warm and moist environment for them to survive. If you think that your child has parasitic intestinal infections, there are some telltale signs that may appear with this. Dr. Sally, ano kaya ang mga ibang mga symptoms o kaya red flags na pwedeng makita ng mga magulang? Ang um, common doon is yung weight loss or yung uh, failure to gain weight or hindi sila masyadong tumataba. Some patients may also present with anemia. Yun yung mga medyo sa mga end stage na kasi there are parasites that feeds on the red blood cells. So most commonly then sa mga children, ang manifestation nila, akala nila minsan mabagal lang ang pick up ng bata yun pala, they are also having this poor concentration because of the presence of parasites in their body. Now, an infected person might also experience dysentery, an intestinal infection that causes diarrhea with blood as well as mucus. This is why deworming is vital. Dr. Sally, what exactly is deworming? Ano mga benefits okay. nito? Some of the most common health benefits of deworming or pagpupurga is it helps the child improve yung child's immunity, thereby protecting mm. them from chronic illness like yung mga gastrointestinal infections. And kapag ka meron ng ganito na nagde-deworm, it can also improve a concentration, thereby nag improve ang kanilang school attendance. 
it also increases the nutritional uptake since kapag wala nang nag-feed na parasite sa kanila, uh, mas nagkakaroon ng maayos na nutritional absorption thereby preventing anemia and other gastrointestinal related infections. And in turn, nape-prevent din ang worm infection within and outside the community. Dok Matthew, gano'ng kadalas dapat mag-deworm? Uh, Here in the Philippines, we do not have actually a mandatory uh, deworming for the adult population, but we have a special program for the adolescent female pregnant and special uh, group of people like uh, the farmers, the food handlers, and also mm-hmm. the people from the indigenous group. So what we do for, with these people is that we give uh, albendazole 400 milligrams or mebendazole 500 milligrams one tablet once a year every time that they seek consultation from a healthcare institution. How uh, often should they be worried the Actually, an administrative order was already issued by the DOH which recommends the use of biannual deworming for children ages 1 to 12 years old. So, mm-hmm. same thing sa adults, pero but with the kids, uh, we, would, we do it biannually or every 6 months. And the WHO and the DOH both recommends either the use of albendazole or mebendazole. So, for albendazole, this can be given for 1 to 2 years old, yung 200 milligrams single dose every Every six months and yung 400 milligrams na dosing every six months then for two years old and above and if merong time na hindi available ang albendazole mebendazole can also be used as 500 milligrams single dose every six months then for one year old and above so either of which can be used basta should be taken on full stomach now as was mentioned earlier hindi lang mga bata ang vulnerable sa parasitic worms Adults can get them as well. More on this when we return. You're watching MedTalk Health Talk, your partner in healthcare. Welcome back to Med Talk Health Talk, where caring is our calling. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez. When parasitic worms enter a human body, they steal nutrients from the person they infect. For children, it affects their growth as well as their development. For adults, man, it can impact their daily lives as well. Dr. Matthew, what happens kapag ang isang adult gets a uh, intestinal worm infection? What does, what does that mean for their health in general? First is with iron deficiency anemia. The person usually presents with easy fatigability and weakness due to the decreased number of your oxygen-carrying function of your hemoglobin, as well as uh, the presence of dizziness and lightheadedness. Also, of course, the the gross uh, appearance of being pale. And for the protein deficiency, that will lead to muscle weakness and easy fatigability, as well as poor wound healing. It may cause dry eyes, dry skin, even night uh, color blindness and impaired wound healing. With that being said, Dr. Matthew, what are the that uh, that are high risk? for contracting intestinal parasites or intestinal worms. That is why our government has this mandatory treatment for a special group of persons, especially the farmers, because again, soil-transmitted infections uh, need your soil for it to be transmitted. So people who work a lot in the soil or uh, who are in contact with soil are the most vulnerable. So uh, farmers, um, also the food handlers, because uh, they are they could uh, transmit the infection through improperly cooked and uh, handled foods. Now, Dr. Sally, talking about deworming, ano, uh, should the deworming be done even pag walang symptoms sa ikita? Mukhang healthy yung bata, walang nararamdaman. Is it good practice to to deworm them uh, every six months? Although it is recommended na dapat lahat sila is biannual or every six months nagde-deworm, there are cases na i-hold mo muna temporarily yung pagde-deworm. For example, the child is sick, may, uh, may lagnat siya or suffering from malnourishment or nagda-diarrhea siya or with abdominal pain. So those are the only instances na you cannot deworm a child. But otherwise, if the child is healthy, as soon as nag-reach na siya ng one year old and up to 12 years old, pwede na silang mag-underwent ng deworming. So I think it's just important na malaman nyo yung mga 
pwedeng mag-infect sa atin. Let's talk about tapeworms first. Dr. Sally, pag-usapan natin ng tapeworms. Ano ba yung mga tapeworm? Sino yung mga mas at high risk para sa mga tapeworm infection? Okay, so when we say tapeworms, these are intestinal parasites that are shaped like tape measures, hence the name tapeworm. And tapeworm infection is caused when someone ingests food or nakainom siya ng water with tapeworm eggs or larva. Now, when these eggs reaches the mouth, na isubo ang kamay or sa food na kakain, uh, the head of the tapeworm will now attach dun sa intestinal wall. And once inside the intestinal wall, na bito ka ng, ng, ng host or ng pasyente, this This can now by migrate or magka-travel na siya to other tissues or sa other body organs. This can further turn as mature na mga adult tapeworms which can last kahit mga 30 years na parang asymptomatic. So you can get a tapeworm infection by consumption ng mga raw o yung mga hilaw na beef, pork, yung mga fish na merong tapeworm eggs. Now, another common type of parasitic worm here in our country ay ang hookworm naman. Dr. Matthew, pag-usapan... Hindi naman yung hookworm, saan ito nang gagaling, anong klaseng mga simptomas meron ito, at sino yung mga at risk ng hookworm infection? Yeah, actually hookworms are named as such due to their curved mouths with cutting plates or teeth, which they need to embed on the host tissues to feed on the blood. So the hookworms that infect man, which is common here in the Philippines, are Necator americanus and Ancelostoma now. So they have complex life cycle wherein the larva it develops in the external environment before infecting the host through the skin penetration. So this is different from what Dr. Sally had explained a while ago because this one needs to penetrate into the skin for it to infect the, the person. So these hookworms are a common soil-transmitted infection among farmers. But there's one worm that we want to also talk about ito ay ang pinworm Dr. Sally, pag-usapan natin ang pinworm ito ay importante because this is very common uh, especially with children as well Pinworm naman is an intestinal infection caused by mga tiny parasitic uh, worms. It's a common infection affecting millions of people each year, lalo na yung mga children, school age in particular. And just like how most of the parasites, like yung tapeworm, ganun din siya. It, you can usually um, get this when the egg reaches the mouth and travels to the intestine. And these eggs can be found on contaminated hands and surfaces, like, like sa mga kumot, beddings, uh, toilet, mga pajamas, underwear, and even mga unsanitized toys. And when one person touches an infected area and people may tend to put their fingers sa mouth nila, and that's when the pinworm infection will start to occur. Some patients or hosts na merong pinworm, they may develop mild symptoms or none at all. But after one to two months, once nag-hatch na yung egg na yon or naging larva na siya, the female pinworm, yun na yung magpupunta, magta-travel, uh, magpa-passed out na siya, maglilay na siya ng eggs, mangingitlog na siya around the anus or dun sa butas ng kwet. So that's when the most common symptom will be felt by the host. So these different types of parasitic worms bring about different effects, but your doctor will diagnose and treat them all the same. So more on this when we return. Your health is our mission here on MedTalk Health Talk. We'll be right back. This is MedTalk Health Talk, your partner in healthcare. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez. A common condition here in the Philippines is parasitic worms, and you can become infected through contaminated food as well as contaminated water. So this is why deworming among children and adults can make a huge difference. So if you're experiencing any unusual symptoms or if you're returning from a different country, don't wait to reach out to your doctor. Remember, getting treatment early can stop the spread of infection to others. Dr. Sally, what are some of the tests to diagnose itong uh, mga parasitic worms, intestinal worms? We usually start, of course, with thorough medical history taking. That includes yung history of travel, the food practices, the nutritional history, the patient's symptoms, and of course, physical examination. After doing such, uh, we now proceed with yung basic pa din is the initial diagnostic of doing stool exam or fecalysis, wherein a stool sample is being sent to the laboratory. 
Uh, other tests that can be done then is yung scotch tape test where a uh, tape is being applied around the anus several times and then this will be sent to the laboratory to be examined under a microscope. And in some cases na worms or parasites cannot be detected through this test, uh, yung iba nagre-request din ng blood test or imaging test like x-ray, CT scan, MRI, it will basically depend on the location and extent of the disease being suspected. So once diagnosed, a doctor will administer treatment through prescription of antiparasitic uh, medications. These are meant to kill the parasites and help them pass through your system. Dr. Sally, pag-usapan natin what should they expect uh, kapag nag-undergo na sila ng antiparasitic treatment. So first of all, some types of intestinal worms, like yung tapeworms, most commonly at uh, Uh, they disappear on their own even if you do not anything, especially if you have a strong immune system, healthy diet, and lifestyle. But there are cases where uh, antiparasitic medications are warranted. And when these are started, after a few weeks of treatment, usually symptoms will gradually improve. And the mga common natin binibigay na mga antiparasitic medications, yung mga albendazole, mebendazole, and so on. Ang mga actions ng antiparasitic medications are very efficient in paralyzing the parasite para mm-hmm. ma-detach sila sa intestinal wall, eventually ma-dissolve, and they will be passed sa stool without us even noticing. And yun, and we must also address din yung kagaya na sabi ni Dr. Matthew, yung uh, uh, iron prescription to address the anemia. So basically, the treatment will depend on the, based on the type of parasite and, of, and how the symptoms present with the patient. Now, Dr. Matthew, speaking of itong treatment natin, ano, Can our viewers self-medicate? Can they treat themselves without the guidance ng uh, doctor? That is a no-no for us, of course, because um, there are certain uh, indications for medications. We, we still have to take note of the complete history of the patients. Also, we need to do physical examination because these are uh, uh, critical data for us when to give certain medication for a person with a worm infection. Now, as with most medical conditions, the best treatment for it is prevention. Dr. Sally, can you give us some tips to prevent parasitic worm infections, especially in uh, mga bansa katulad natin na developing pa? Mainstay pa din is yung regularly wash our hands with soap and water. We must also ensure yung food and uh, drink safety. So, ibig sabihin nito, let us refrain from uh, consumption ng mga uh, unboiled or mga unsafe na water, even consumption of mga unwashed and improperly cooked na food. Also, proper diet is also paramount when it comes to Uh, treating and preventing parasite infestation. Okay, very good. And with that, thank you very much, pediatrician Dr. Sally Puentes de la Rosa and family medicine specialist Dr. Matthew Madria for being with us today in this very uh, helpful topic. Uh, kumbaga, lahat tayo affected dito. We appreciate your time and your insights very much. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez and thank you for watching MedTalk Health Talk on CNN Philippines. We'll see you again next time.